Uh, I'm Marta Civil, and I am a, I'm the Frank Daniels Distinguished Professor of Mathematics Education. And I joined the faculty here uh, recently in, in fall of 2011. My research uh, is quite diverse, but I would say that the main emphasis is on the mathematics education of low-income, um, marginalized students and communities. My background is in mathematics first, and then in mathematics education later as, you know, for my PhD. And I'm very interested in working with um, communities trying to understand the, what we call the funds of knowledge. So the premise here is that in any community there is knowledge and resources and experiences that we can bring to bearing into the uh, school in, uh, community, into the teaching, the regular teaching. So what I like to do is uh, work with teachers, work with families, and work with um, students. I really think that we need to involve all these groups in order to improve the mathematics education. Most of my work has been in Latino communities in Arizona and mostly with Mexican, Mexican-American uh, recent immigrants and non-recent immigrants because of the history of Arizona. You know, of course, many of them have been, been there um, always. I mean, the, you know, Arizona was part of Arizona, was certainly part of Mexico. I've also worked a little bit with Native Americans, and I've also done some work uh, with the Yupik um, Alaskan uh, natives as part of a you know, consultant for a project uh, that Jerry Lipka has over there. What I've learned and what I think it's important to communicate when we work with teachers particularly and with the schools in general, when I say teachers I also mean you know school leaders, is we need to move away from a deficit perspective. Um, quite often we tend to see students who are different from us, students who are low income, students who haven't succeeded very you know so well by whatever measures we want to use, we tend to focus on what they lack. We tend to see them as the problem, as opposed to trying to see um, what are the resources, what is their knowledge, and learning from them, which is this whole funds of knowledge perspective that I, you know, that I'm hoping, of course, to bring um, to the faculty. I mean, to the research here. I've had several projects that I would like to, you know, briefly summarize because they all explain a little bit my, my trajectory. By training, I would say that first I started more in the cognitive sciences, and my PhD research was actually on understanding and beliefs of pre-service elementary teachers, and it was fairly cognitive. But I also became fascinated by this idea that people tend to do well in, in tasks, and in my case in mathematical, in tasks that involve mathematics, when they see the task as relevant to them. And so you might see, I, I became very intrigued by the studies what is called the street, um, the street mathematics, and the the, comp the dichotomy in a sense, so the, the the gap between in a school mathematics and out of a school mathematics. So, for example, we would see children who could do very well in street mathematics, and then similar tasks in pencil and paper they couldn't do them. Okay. So this led me to work in the ethnomathematics arena. Um, and from there, getting more into anthropology and into cultural aspects of mathematics. And so that's how I've transitioned. And now my belief is that we need to blend those perspectives, the cognitive science and the social cultural uh, perspective. And the social cultural is what I do, which is basically a perspective that takes into account the cultural, the linguistic, um, and the political backgrounds of the students and the communities that we work with. So based on that, the projects that I've had, one of them was a large parental involvement project in schools in the south part of, of Tucson, so mostly um, Latino, you know, as I say, Mexican, Mexican-American population. And the exciting part of that project, there were many aspects, but the exciting part was that we work with teams of teachers, parents, and administrators, and they provided math workshops to the community at large. So all of a sudden you redefine the role of the parent. The parent was not just the recipient of you know, what we may teach them, which I don't like that, uh, that approach, but on the contrary, they became the facilitators of workshops to other parents. And this is based on, on my concept of parents as intellectual resources that they can bring a lot uh, to the table and that we should be listening to them. So that was one aspect uh, of that project. We developed some materials, um, 
we did a lot of we had mini courses that since then I've been using or adapted for other projects in which the parents would come for eight weeks and learn more or less I mean for eight sessions and learn about fractions learn about geometry algebra you know so but we also learn from the parents which is the important thing I want to emphasize another project was girls in the system and that one was with uh, Latina uh, girls it was in cooperation with the Girl Scouts and with several departments at my former university um, and uh, it was with um, Native American girls Latina girls and white low-income uh, girls the, the main point was that they were the kids were low-income the girls we also had boys in some of the camps because the idea was to study the gender interaction and we wanted and it was a laboratory for pre-service teachers and teachers to explore issues of who has a voice, how do we facilitate the participation of all. So in during the year, we had after school sessions and those were for girls only. We had like eight weeks of on a topic and it was, there was an engineering, you know, we had engineers involved and we had scientists and, and myself as, you know, from the math point of view. And so we had, you know, eight weeks devoted to some kind of engineering or to some kind of math. Or During the summer, we had summer camps and some of the summer camps were uh, also had boys in, in them. And then we did the briefing with the teachers and the pre-service teachers. So it was a combination of outreach to the community, professional development, and research. And then the last project that I want to talk about is the one that is still you know, going, uh, and that's the SEMELA, that's the Center for the Mathematics Education of Latinos and Latinas. And this is by far the largest project I've ever had. And it involved four universities. And the main goal, um, was to when it's, you know, all these projects that are NSF funded. And the main goal from the point of view of centers like Semela was the production, um, the preparation, the production is now, of um, PhDs and postdocs grounded in a particular area of expertise. For us, it was the mathematics education of Latinos. Um, and it was a very interdisciplinary approach in which we brought experts from you know, the language um, aspect because of working with English language learners and uh, the, so the social, the political, mathematics, mathematics education. So again, the perspective was largely sociocultural, very interdisciplinary, and in there we worked, as I said, I mean, that's, it was a culmination for me with teachers, uh, with families, and with the students. And um, what we did is we had a, a cohort of, not cohort, but I mean, of several grad students and postdocs working on different projects and, you know, coming out with, of course, with dissertations in the case of the grad students. We also did outreach, and the outreach served both as training ground for the fellows, what we call, you know, the, the postdocs and the grad students were the fellows to get experience doing this kind of work, but also for, uh, for research. And then we also did uh, research. Um, through this project, I became very interested in another aspect. So one of them is the culture. And for me, the other aspect was the language. So most recently, I've become uh, intrigued and almost, I would say, bothered <laughs> by some of the restrictive language policies that we have in, in some parts of the country, which do not allow students to use their home language uh, in the classroom, uh, or teachers to use students' home language to teach mathematics. And so I've been working on, on, on that aspect and, and trying to document how the mathematical participation of students changes drastically if they are allowed, if they're in an environment where their home language is valued and encouraged. What attract me, attract, attracted me to, to UNC, well, several things, but one of them is the changing demographics of the state. Um, in the last, what, 15 years or so, there's been a big increase in, in Latino immigration, and it's a very different um, Latino situation from what, from what Arizona is. As I said, Arizona, it was mostly um, an established community, and those who were recent immigrants, which there were many also, they came from mostly northern Mexico. Here is much, it's much more diverse, and the state, is a state, North Carolina, did not have prior experience. So what I've noticed is that there is a lot to be done in terms of working with English language learners. Um, but at the same time, what is exciting to me is that, of course, there is a very strong di you know, diversity and, and it's with the African-Americans. So now having African-Americans with 
it's not a, a group that I've worked with because in Arizona we don't have you know that many and Latinos and the rural component which I, I don't have experience either that to me was very exciting so that was one of the main reasons another reason really was more at the personal level that I've been for 21 years in, in Arizona and I just was ready for a change and I wanted the change to be very different and this is very different <laughs> at all levels you know um, I'm excited so far about you know I've only been here for a few days but about the community the, the, the colleagues here the different projects and I'm just really looking forward to being able to work with several of them and you know some of the junior faculty that also came along uh, with me are you know in my lines of, in, uh, you know, of research interests, I'm really excited about this.